Hey guys, it's Saving Money with Jazzy. It's me and Mia. I say hi, Mama. <laughs> yeah, so have you ever just woke up and felt like not going to work? <laughs> That's how I felt, and I was like, you know what? My job is really flexible where we can choose um, our day off. Um, so I just said, you know what? What the heck? I'll just take Monday off and I'll go to work on Saturday. So yeah, so today we just I just woke up like that, like tired, like I did. Plus, I went to sleep late last night as well. Just trying to finish washing, get the clothes ready for the week, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and then today we're just, the things that we're gonna do today is like I just take advantage of the fact that it's Monday and it's a day in the week, so it's not a weekend. Like, I'm usually off and I really can't do much because it's a weekend. So, today I can get, take care of a couple of things I need to get done. So, like, we gotta go take, pay a couple bills, we gotta go get something to eat. Um, and then I wanna go see Ross, see what they got there. Cause I have a secret Santa for my work and I got I gotta go get his present um, it's gonna be for this Friday so he chose to get like um, cause we had to write down a couple things that we want like we, we would want um, and then whoever picked the name would have the choices on there so it'd be a little bit easier for everybody so he just said he wanted snacks jazz CDs and cash funny guy he's a really funny character too um, so I'm probably going to go see Ross, see what they got. I wanted to get him like a Buddha statue, like the ones that you can sit on the table. I was planning on getting something like that. I think he would want, I think he would like that. Um, so we'll see what we can find at Ross. But I just wanted to get on here, you know what I mean? Because I just started this channel and I was gone for a year. So I was trying to do the coupon things and it's just, it's hard to do with the newborn going back to work is it, just hard in family life you know what I mean so you do have to be dedicated to that to make it successful and I just couldn't um, and I and I just fell off to be honest I just fell off but this year I just you know what I'm a little bit more motivated but maybe not so much for coupons you know I'll, I will do here and there a couple videos and maybe uh, what I like to do is budget and I never made videos on my budgeting but it's really helped me this year um, so I got into the budgeting. I just, you know, just write down all your bills. You know, can manage manage it, and you can um, break them down into each check that you get, so you're not paying everything on one check and be broke for two weeks. You know what I mean? So that's what I got into the budgeting, just to manage our stuff, right? And plus, sometimes I'll be paying the bills, and I forget one, and I'm like, oh crap, I didn't pay it because I don't have nothing written down. I don't have a plan, and it's just going off of top of my head what I think needs to be due and I just forget a couple things. So that's that's the thing I do, that's what, a couple videos I'll be doing about that, just my budgeting every month, you know. I, I did one for December and January, so go check out that video. Um, and other, another thing, um, I wanted just to, you know, get on this, I want to be a vlogger, I want to talk to you guys, I want to vent, I want to, you know, introduce you guys to my family, you know, make it a family you know, environment. I want because I feel like we do a lot of like crazy stuff, and it's funny sometimes that we go to my parents' house. It's just, like it's hilarious, and I'm just like, you know what? I should probably like record this. And you know, for me, for for the long run, it'll be like memories. You know, so it'll be like I can go back and look at it, like oh my gosh, like I've been doing that all weekend. I was like, look at my baby, how she's so small she was, and how my son was so little, and now they're growing up so fast I'm just like it's nice to look back at it you know what I mean that's another thing that would, it's a plus too as well um and then you know and plus I've been like I watch a couple of channels my favorite ones you know like the Aguilar's you know like us always Mezamob um and and Coupadar with Tony so like it's not only about couponing with Tony it's it's like her life so you know she has shared a lot of her life and, and things that have happened and I think that helps you ther like therapy type of thing like because you can vent you can like let it go off your chest like so you already told someone you know like something like that I think it'll help you for yourself you know what I mean so like I just thought you know what I'm just like I can do that I can I can do I can be a vlogger I can vlog every day of my life I why not so yeah, so I just want to tell you guys a little bit about my background. So I was born in San Diego, California. We did move out here when I was eight. Um, and I'm 33 now, so it's been a while. So I basically was raised out here in Utah. Um, 
I had my son very young. I had my son at 19 years old. So my birthday is the 12th of April, and my son was born the 26th. So right when I turned 19, he was born. So the story with my son is his father we met. Crazy story, you know, being young and stupid. <laughs> so I like to, like, I was having a lot of issues at home at that time, and I would run away, don't want to go home, just being rebellious, being a teenager, you know, basically. So my parents were always going through it with me. So one time I had left the house and I was trying to be sneaky and not get caught and not let my parents see me because I was just up the street from my house. So my friend's car breaks down, huh? What luck. So we're sitting there in the middle of the night and her car breaks down, there's no gas. So we're just sitting there and this car kept driving back and forth, right? And I hate guys that just stare while you're sit while you're walking, you know, I, I don't like that. I don't like that attention. <laughs> So I kept flipping him off. I'm like, what do you keep looking at? Because he kept stopping right in the middle of the street. And I'm like, what is your issue? And then he would leave. And then he finally, the second time he came back, he stopped. None of my friends speak Spanish. I'm the only one that speaks Spanish. And he happened to only speak Spanish. So I talked to him and I was like, you know what? Can you help us out? My friend's car's, you know, we don't know what's wrong with it. Or if it needs gas, like, would you help us get to a gas station or something? So he was like, yeah, let me go grab my cousin down the street so he goes gets his cousin comes back his cousin puts gas in a car or whatever and then they're like we'll follow you guys um back to your guys place to so make sure you guys get home safe so we they do that you know what i mean and i happen to get the guy's number and you know things like that so it, it was just not awkward it was just like i'm never gonna see this guy again hopefully you know so i was just like okay yeah you can have my number yeah go ahead so like three months passed by, he didn't call. He finally called and we met up, you know, we started hanging out, we started dating, and then my son was conceived, okay? So at that time, he w he had went to California, I believe, and he didn't tell me, so we broke up. I got mad, I was in my feelings, got, I was pissed. I was like, you can't, and he goes, well, who are you to tell if I'm going to California? I said, okay, well, bye-bye, <laughs> go to California. So that happened, and then, Three weeks, I believe. No, three months. I was not feeling well. I started this job at the warehouse with my friend. And I just threw up on the side of the road. And she's like, Jasmine, you're pregnant. I'm like, no, I'm not. How? If I haven't been with nobody for, what was it, three months? And she's like, no, I think you should. Then why are you getting only sick in the morning time when we're going to work? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. And I was 18. So I was like, no, no, that couldn't happen. So I told my sister, drive me to parent pound her. Um, Planned Parenthood um, and they can see what's going on you know what if it's something else and so they plan Parenthood you go in there and they tell you you know like what's the problem and they'll be like okay well let's take pregnancy tests just to be safe you know make sure it's not that and that's not why you're feeling that way so I took a pregnancy test and what happened it came out positive so I was like holy crap so mind you it, that means that well I'm technically three months pregnant at that time and I didn't even know like I did not know our I was so naive, I didn't pay attention. I was so young, I was like, okay, I've thrown up. Okay, I'm eating, I'm a teenager. I'm gonna be eating a lot, or, you know, I didn't think about nothing. But yeah, I was three months, and it was crazy because when I found out I was pregnant, I was scared to tell my parents, because my dad's very strict, very, I was just scared to tell my parents. I was like, oh, my mom will take it the most lightly, like lightly, but my dad would take it rough, you know, like kick me out the house kind of, you know, thing. So I was like, so I told my mom first, and my mom was like, no, we're not doing it. You're going to get an abortion. We can't afford it. Your dad can't afford another baby. And I'm like, what? And I didn't expect that to come from my mom, you know? And I was like, maybe she... So I was just pissed. I was like, no, I'm not going to abort my child. So I was like contemplating, like, leaving. And I'm like, I'm going to have to move, and I'm crying, and I'm freaking out. And then, you know, my mom tells my dad, and my dad didn't even freak out. It's weird. He didn't even get mad it was really my mom got got mad the most and I was just like okay well then my mom's like I want to make sure it's for sure so she took me to the clinic and she was there when I took another pregnancy test and I said yeah she is she's pregnant she's about three months and I'm like oh crap so then at that time that's how I was like okay well I'm gonna have to start working I'm gonna have to start doing what I have to do because my dad can't afford another child let alone my child so my dad was you know, he didn't take it as hard as I thought, but my mom did. So, me and my mom didn't speak for a good month, I think. And she was so mad. And I was mad at the fact she said that, you know. But what can I do? I can't blame her, you know, because that's, like, not the best news you want to hear ever. Your child having a baby so young. 
So then, um, that happened, and then time went by. I was like trying to make it still work with his dad, you know, because we had never talked, and I had to call the dad and say, you know what, I just found out I was pregnant. He's like, what? Are you sure? He's like, congratulations, who's the dad? I said, you're the dad. <laughs> so I had baby, baby daddy drama from the beginning, and I just didn't want to deal with it because I'm like, you know what, he don't want to be involved. I'm going to do it on my own and do me, really, to be honest. And I did. So I would try to go and, like, you know, keep them involved because I'm like, I, my son deserves to know his family and his dad, even though he doesn't want to be involved, you know, that's not my son's fault. So I told him, do you want to come to the clinic when I find out what the baby's going to be? He said, yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there. And I'm like, and he never showed up. So that was like a thing to me was like, don't ever say you're going to be there and then you don't show up. That like, I hate that. So I was like, whatever, he didn't go. That just shows me, you know, he's not, he's not reliable. So then I started going to his mom's house. I would go every month. I was getting bigger. My belly was getting bigger and bigger. And they would tell me, you know, he's working in California. He's not here in Utah. And the mean, and the whole time, he's upstairs in the window looking outside, looking at me while his mom's lying to me. Okay. And I was like, wow. And I didn't know this because until the little brother told me everything. That California, he was with another girl. She, He got her pregnant. Um, and I'm sitting here trying to make it work right trying to keep him involved with her, his son and it just didn't so then I was like well, you know what I'm not gonna look stupid and keep trying to make this work so I just left it alone guys and I just raised my son by myself did our own thing um, and now he's 14 and it's just crazy because his dad tried to come in his life maybe last year yeah last year and the fact that you know my son doesn't know Spanish he does but he doesn't know enough to speak like conversate and his dad doesn't know English. So I already knew that was gonna happen. You know, how are they gonna communicate? So I told my son, you know what? And I've always been up front with my son, like if you want to, you want me to find your dad, I'll find your dad. You wanna to talk to your dad, I'll, I'll get the number and you can talk to him. Like I've always been like that with him. You know, it's always the ball's in his court. Whenever you're ready, or if you don't want to, then you don't want to. I'm not gonna make him, definitely not. And he told me one day, he was like, you know, tell him when I wanna find him, I'll look for him and tell him I already have a dad because he has Ryan, right? My husband. And he's like his, he's been his dad's figure ever since for four years now. So, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry. So he's been his, that dad, you know, in his life. So he was just like, if, when I'm ready to talk to him, I'll look for him. I'm like, cool. I respect that. You know, he's 14. He's, he can, he's, He's old enough to know what he wants and when he wants to do stuff. Like, I'm not going to make him speak to him. So when I told his dad that, you know, I was like, he's not ready to talk to you. When he's ready to talk to you, he'll find, he'll look for you. And his dad was like, all right, I won't ever bug him again. So that's cool, whatever, you know. I'm not, I, what do you want? I'm in the middle of it, so I'm just like, I don't want to make him feel like, oh, no, you know. No, I'm not going to excuse it because he hasn't been there. So I'm not going to be like, it's okay, you know, it's, as you just go and do it. No. My son has every right to feel the way he wants. So that happened, and then his um, dad's in Mexico, so it's that even more. You know, he's not even here. So that happened. You know, with my son, and now thank God, you know, I met Ryan, and you know, he he could be that dad for him. And when my son doesn't need nothing else, you know what I mean. And I just I love it because they have a really good relationship. Like we're still like because that's his stepdad. So like Ryan. So Isaac will like, won't call him dad yet. And I don't want to pressure him to do so. I think it might be a good shit fall asleep. Um, but he'll like, at his phone, he'll put Ryan slash dad. <laughs> so weird. But, you know, I'm not going to pressure him to call him dad. You know, when he's ready, he'll tell him. And Ryan knows, you know, he looks at him like that anyways. And Ryan, vice versa, Ryan looks at him as a son as well. And Isaac knows that, so... It's okay it's just a it's just a label you know what I mean like so that that's the story with behind my son and his and my journey with him um and then let's see and then I met Ryan four years ago funny story it's the real story so I don't know if there's like a dating app called like POF it's like plenty of fish yeah I know dating app but I was trying it right and I talked to, I was talking to this guy and he was like he was talking to me, and, like, we were barely getting to know each other as far as, like, 
you know, just the questions like, where are you from? How are you? How many kids do you have? Stuff like that. It was never something serious like dating or sexual, nothing like that. He was very respectful. So we were talking, you know, for a while. And he had call, he would call me once or twice. And we we talked once or twice. And I was like, okay. And that, that was it. So I was expecting another phone call from him. And I got a call from Ryan. And I was drunk at the time because we were had a baby shower and girl had a couple drinks and I was like over the edge so um he called and I was like who's this and he was like I'm Ryan I'm so and so's friend um he gave me your number to call you and I'm like what I was like do I have like a piece of meat passing my number around I'm like where is he what happened to him and that's when I found out he was in prison how he called me I don't know I'm not getting into that but what the hell I didn't know that he was in prison. I didn't know I was getting phone calls from a prisoner because you don't know nothing of that on these dating sites. And that, that's a lesson learned right there. You don't know exactly who these men are and what they're doing because it's normal. Like, you think it's a normal phone number. It's a local phone number. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I, think that, I didn't think nothing about it. So I told Ryan, go, no, don't look like a piece of me. Why y'all calling my number? And I'm not, you know what I mean? I was like, no. And then he was like, he, he was like, why are you getting crazy? And then he hung up, right? So mind you, I was a little tipsy, get a little attitude when I'm drunk. So then he calls me the next morning and he's like, are you sober now? Can we talk now? I'm like, yeah. So that's when he explained to me a little bit what happened, you know, what's going on and what's going to happen with him. And so me and Ryan started talking, you know, because I don't know why God does what he does, but I feel like God placed Ryan and we met like that for a reason, I guess, because how else would I meet, meet Ryan? I would never met him ever. So we started talking for a while, eight, seven, eight months. What was it like? Basically, like nine months we talked. Um, and, you know, and it got a little serious. And at that time, I was a department manager at my work. So I was like very busy. Like, I didn't have time to do anything. I would just work, home, work, my son. So I didn't really have time to do much. So I told, um, I told him, I was like, you know, what are we doing? You know, because I was just like, I hadn't been with nobody for how many years when someone was like, but someone was, how old was he when he met Ryan? Dad. He was like nine years old when Dad. when I met Ryan. So I was like, I've been Dad. single for yeah. nine years. I have never had a man. He's never met a man. He's never lived with the man. He's never nothing. So my son only knows me and by myself. So I told Ryan, you know, are you, you know, where do you step? Like, where do you want to do? Do you want to settle down? Do you want to still be out in the street? Cause I don't, I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready to have a family. I've always been ready. Um, so I told him, like, that's what I want to do. Like, I do want to have another child. I want to get married. I want to have a family. I want to get my own place. But at the time, I was living with my parents. You know, and I always lived with my parents. So I was like, it was a big step for me, meeting someone. And my dad, I told my dad, my dad didn't even know what was going on. And finally, when he was almost going to get out, Ryan was, I told my dad, Dad, you know, I'm dating this guy and he's in prison. And when he gets out, we're going to move in together. But I was like, what? He flipped out. He's like, what? There's so many other guys out there. Why do you have to choose one in prison? What's wrong with you? What about Isaac? And just going off. And I'm like, dad, I love him. Don't get mad. And I'll just start crying. I was like, dad, you guys don't understand. Like, I really love him. Like, I've talked to him for a while. Like, it's just, just not just happened. You know, and I'm, I'll move out. And my dad was like, You're, why? Why? And like, that's how he was for a little bit until he got out. And then my mom was like, you know, she had brothers in prison and she's had experience like that. She was just like, you can't trust nobody in prison. Like, they just use women and all. She just kept putting crap in my head. And and it, I started messing with me. It started messing with me a lot. I started asking Ryan, like, what's your intentions? And he's like, what the heck? Why are you, why are you asking me that stuff? You know, it's already been like nine months, you know, and, I, and he hasn't done nothing of like that sort. Um, if anything, he sent me money home to my house so I can purchase the get the apartment and all that stuff like he's been saving money because he was working um in the prison like they'll take him off out of the prison and go work on sites I don't know how that what that is work work crew or something like that so he did that so he had money saved up and he was just like oh I was gonna save this for, up for a truck but then I met you and then I want to get our own place so he he helped me get the apartment so I think my parents are just really um uneasy because they had never met him 
and yeah, he was in prison, so that's even more, it was against us, you know, so I was like, I already knew that when, when, I, when I was going to tell him, I already knew that I was going to hear something from both of them, I already knew it, so when that happened, you know, I told Ryan, I'm like, hey, you know, my parents feel this way, and he was like, okay, well, I'll just have to get out and show them different, you know, show them who, like, let them meet me, because, you know, I'm not like that, so then I told Ryan, that's true, you know, like, you can't judge them, you haven't met them, so Ryan's like, let me get out, and and I could show them, you know, they can trust me. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's true. So Ryan gets out, you know, and then my parents, you know, my he met my dad. And I don't know what, but my mom, my dad and Ryan, it clicked. I don't know if because, I don't know why. But me and my, Ryan and my dad have always had a good relationship in the, since the beginning. My mom, she was so iffy about it. But then when she seemed like he wanted to work and get out of prison and start working and provide for his family, and, you know, and then. And he's, he, she's seen how I was changing as far as, like, relax, you know, because I was always tense and stressed out because it was just, I had to provide for my son and I had to make sure everything was good. So, like, this time I had to, like, let some of that stress go towards his way, you know, and make it too of a stress, not so stressed because I can spread out the responsibilities now. So my mom was just like, okay, well, that's good, you know, and he, she hasn't, he hasn't shown her any different. So it, it was good, like, the first year, my parents, they, they got along really well, and Ryan pro proved himself to them, um, because he got a job, he worked, you know, he wasn't getting into trouble, and it was just all good all around. Um, but, like, any relationship, you go through your problems, right? Like, me, I have my problems. I have, like, I'm a very jealous person, and that does fall into because of my past. I got cheated on, you know, I didn't have the best experience in boyfriends. I didn't have many anyways. I only had like really one from high school and that's who did it to me. You know, he he cheated on me the whole time we were dating and it was with a female in, in Mexico, right? Over the phone. So that's horrible. And I was young too, so I like stayed with me. It stuck with me. So like I take that with me like baggage. Every relationship I was like, you're a cheater. And I don't, I go, I'm not going to wait for him to do it. I'm going to, I'm think. I always think he's doing it now. So Ryan did get, get a lot for me from that. You know, I always was, battling that part you know the jealousy part and and really in the back of my mind I was always thinking I don't want him to get in trouble again I don't want him to get locked up again because then I had got pregnant with my daughter Mia and I was like perfect you know I have my baby and and you know she's coming so I was like even more protective mode because I was like I don't want nothing to mess up it's perfect right now it's nice right now everyone's getting along we're good right but everyone has their challenges in life or in relationship right so Ryan he had a baggage of his own that he didn't tell me until like after we spoke for like 10 months you know right before he got out of prison he had it slipped out of his mouth that he was married so I was like oh crap and I was like Shh, what am I do now I love this man I already planned my life with this man we're almost gonna do it and he's about to get out what do I do because it's just like freak so, like, me, I'm like, I don't like that kind of stuff. Like, I'm not going to be with someone that's married um, and be a homewrecker, no. So, I told him, like, well, I'm sorry, and I just hung up because I didn't know what else to do when he said that. So, he called back. He called back, and I'm like, no, no, I don't want to deal with it. Like, I'm just going to have to cut it off because I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not like that. So, he calls me back, and he explains to me. He's like, I'm married, but I'm, I'm not married. And I'm like, what does that mean? He's like, I was 19 years old. I got married to some girl. Um... And I was in jail at that time. I was in prison at that time when it happened. And it's been like, what, 12 years that they've been married but never lived together? And it was just paper. And I'm just like, what the heck? How come you never got divorced? How come? Here goes me, right? So I'm like, how come you never got divorced? 12 years it took you guys to be divorced. And then I started thinking, well, do you guys have something that I'm in the, I'm going to be the one in the middle? Like, you guys are like, this is what you guys do all the time. That's why you guys never got divorced. Like, I started thinking a lot of crap and I put a lot of dirt on my relationship with him. So now it's like, okay, I don't trust him. Now I feel like I have all these questions now I didn't have before. And it was just, it went left quick. So I was just like, dang. So then I told Ryan, I go, this is not help my jealousy at all. Like this, I'm trying to, you know, press it down to where I don't, I'm not crazy jealous because you haven't given me no reason to be. But now it's just like, okay, well, how come you didn't tell me this in the beginning? So then I flipped the heck out. I flipped out on him. So I told my go, you need to get divorced. You need to get divorced. We need to make it happen. Because he said, oh, we've been trying to do it. And it just doesn't, you know, either I don't have, 
I don't return the papers to her or she doesn't turn them. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, well, it needs to get done. Because I'm not going to live like that to where I'm with someone that's married, technically. Even though you guys never were together, never had kids, nothing. And she doesn't even have your last name. I go, I'm not going to live like that. Because I want to be married. So, like, at some point, you know, it has to get done. Like, I want to get married. I want to I want to have your last name. I want to be a family, you know, complete it. And how am I going to do that if this woman holds that title and for nothing? You know what I mean? So then a whole lot of drama happened because of that. Her, she got in, I guess that's what she does, gets in his relationships. Which I don't know why he allows it because he gives her the, his, doesn't tell her nothing. So of course she's going to keep doing it. So I did. I said, you know what, I'm with him now. What do you need? You know, what, what, what are you looking for? What do you want? I don't understand. I want to get divorced. Okay, well let me help you get that done. So she, I had her send the paperwork to my house we filled them she he filled them out i sent them back to her then she i told her go did you go do it f file them now and she goes well where's the money okay now you're just playing around because if you're if, if it was me and i've been trying to get this done for 12 years and i finally got him to sign the papers and i have them in my hand i would file the freaking papers not make an excuse like oh, okay where's the other, where's your half of the money so what do you not want that are you just making an excuse to like contact him i don't get it i don't understand it so i just finally got pissed i told my i told rango we're gonna do it you're gonna go to the car office you're gonna file and i'll just have her sign him and you're gonna do everything he's like okay we didn't even ask her for the money that's the thing like it's not about the money it's about the fact that we wanted to get done i told ryan if you don't get it done you're gonna hear me all the time and i'm probably not gonna work out because i'm probably leave him because he's not doing it and I don't want to live like that to be known as the other woman and just because they're not physically married like together in a home or something like that it's still marriage they're still married they said I do they still got married so I told Ryan I go I don't understand what the heck was going on back then I can't judge him on his past because that's before me um so all I can do is work with with what's been happening with me in his life so that's this is just part of it and I told him I go look you need to take care of it so yeah so Money wise, yeah, it was kind of tight. You know, it was never enough money we had to do it. So that's, and I was just pissed because it's true. You know, I can't, it's not for free. It does cost money. So I told Ryan, you know what? Instead of paying this bill, go do the divorce. I, I go, F this is, we're going to have to some, uh, one point, just do it. So we did that. I go, he, I go, here's the money, go file. And thank God it got done. You know, he was finalized and he was, and he's divorced now. Um, and now we're planning on getting married. Um, and it's going to be probably like in the beginning of March. We're going to go to Vegas. Um, I'm going to get my brother's ordained. So he's going to um, marry us. My younger brother, Daniel. So it's like my life is not perfect. You know, I, I've had my share of experiences. And I just want to get on here on YouTube. Because I know there's a lot of people on YouTube that watch YouTube um, that are going through crap. You know what I mean? And. And I feel like, don't ever feel like you have to justify a situation or be like, I love this man, so I'm going to just settle for what he comes with. No. No, you have your own goals. You have your own standards. You have your own everything. And it's just weird how things happen because I know I'm not the only one that fell in love with someone that was in prison or this happened to them. I feel like I got catfished. <laughs> I felt like I got catfished because I didn't even know they were in prison. So, like, I know this happens to a lot of people. You know what I mean? It's just, you can't, you can't, you can't help but f who you fall in love with. Um, and it's just, I don't know. And that time I asked, I was, I don't really pray. I was not really religious or believe in God that much. I do believe in God, but not, like, active, like, pray every day. Had a relationship with him, you know. And, and then, you know, and with this whole journey, I'm just like, that was God. He placed everything where it had to be, put me through everything to prepare me for maybe for marriage and for life like that, to be a wife, to be able to handle certain situations a different way, be more patient instead of popping off like I was. So now I'm like more relaxed. I want to be relaxed. I want to be patient. I think about the problem first before I react. Um, that's hard for me because I am not like that. You know, I, re I react first and then after I'm like, oh crap, I should did I did too much type of thing. So I know that these videos might help other people, but me, I just, I feel like it's me speaking to all y'all. Like, you're all my friends. I want, you know what I mean? Like, I I just like to share my story. Like, I'm just a very talkative person as, as well. Um, so, 
and I, I'm a very open book, so like I want to start the channel off right. I want you guys introduce to you, let you guys know everything about me before we start getting into these vlogs. And you're gonna be like, well, we don't even know this girl at all. We don't know her family. We don't know her background, and she's we're over here watching her for what? So I do want to tell you guys a little bit about that. You know, and that's a lot. You know, if you guys have questions, you know, I'm new to this whole YouTube thing, and I know that it's off of questions, so you have to ask questions and. You know, I like to have a lot of story time. So I will have story time a lot because I have many things that have happened in my life, experiences that are crazy um, that maybe can benefit someone else out there. You know what I mean? Um, and feel free to ask me questions on the comments. Like, I don't, I have no problem, good or bad. You know, everyone's child to their opinion. And maybe it does look, it does look bad my situation to somebody else. You know what I mean? Because it does, it looks crazy. But where we at now you know everything happens for a reason guys i truly believe in that i feel like god wanted us together and we're together you know we've had a time where we almost wasn't together you know things happen i'm just crazy i'm a crazy female very emotional so yeah so that's basically it I think my baby she fell asleep so yeah so today i'm just gonna do a couple videos so um i'm gonna go to pay a couple bills we're going to shoot over to Ross um, and pick up that gift for my secret Santa guy. Um, and then probably go get something to eat. And then I'll catch you guys back at home. And we can close this video out. I'm going to see what I'm going to cook for dinner. I'm not quite sure what I want to cook. I think I'm going to do some chili dogs. Sounds pretty good. Some chili dogs with some cheese and some chips on the side. Maybe cut some potatoes and make some of those uh, fried potato ridges, right? In the oven. But look, I, I will see when we get home. Um, I'll record that for you guys as well. You know, I want to be very transparent with you guys. I want you guys to see everything. I'm, I, I like to share everything, guys. So, um, if you have any comments or anything like that, I'm just going to be myself. You know, and I take good or bad comments. I don't really, you know, that's what it is. That's how life is. You know, you're going to get the good and the bad. It's not going to be perfect. Um, so, yeah, and... I'll probably sh uh, show you guys when I go pick up Isaac from um, from daycare. Because um, the daycare picks him up from school for me. And, and then I can go pick him up from there. So we'll do that. We'll go get him. And he likes to be on YouTube. He has his own little channel. It's called Immortal. And he does like Fortnite um, games and stuff. And he's like talking on... I don't know how he does that. I need to learn. I told him he needs to teach me how to do that. Because I can have like a little screen on the side here. Talking at the same time. But you'll see him later. Um, and then... Yeah, guys, so let me go pay these bills really fast, and then I'll bring you guys to Ross with me and see what they got there, a little goodies, okay? All right, catch you guys later.